loneliness, and the feeling of being unwanted is the most terrible poverty. Every morning, I stare at the ceiling. It had already been a month of the same routine. A month of waking up and lying still in my bed, staring at the plain white ceiling. As for why I developed the habit, I can assure you it was just a childish reason. I would lie there, waiting for someone to come into my room and greet me, to brighten my day with a smile, to give me the motivation to begin my day. Of course, I knew, back then, that it would never happen. Sitting up, I observed the emptiness in my room, and then half-heartedly removed the bedsheet from my person. A few groggy minutes later, I was dressed in my school's uniform and making my way out the door. I didn't stop to say goodbye to anyone. There was no one to say it to. I was alone. My parents were both successful American business people, and two completely dedicated to the work. More so than me. In time, I, their son, had become a distraction to them. To remedy that, they sent me across the ocean to Japan to complete my studies as far away from them as financially possible. All that, merely a month ago. Locking the door to the apartment my parents so graciously paid for, I lifted my school bag and began to walk down the stairs, aiming for the convenience store next door. As I proceeded down the steps, I went by a single crow that was sitting peacefully on the railing, not at all reacting when I walked near it. I glanced at it briefly and continued on my way. When I first arrived on Japanese soil, a man in a black suit was at the airport waiting for me identifying himself as an employee of my parents' many Japanese partners, he stated that he was to be my guide. After we climbed into his car, he explained to me where I would be living from there on and what school I would be attending. He also told me the essentials of living in the country, as well as the fact that everything I would need was already at my new home. Once we reached our destination, he drove me to the small and simple apartment complex I was to stay at, handed me the keys, and drove off, wishing me luck. He never gave me his name, and I have not seen him since. Entering the convenience store, I casually walked into the snack aisle, ignoring the wide selection of trans fats and grabbing two rice balls from the shelf. Making sure they were the ones filled with synthetic pickled plums, I then went over to the register counter, where an elderly Japanese woman greeted me with a blank look, a muted TV behind her broadcasting the weather. I remember reading clear skies on the screen. That will be 200 yen, please. The old lady said to me without any emotion, her words hollow. She did not even look at what I had picked out. Makes one wonder how many items had left the store for only that amount of yen. Here you go. I responded back simply, pulling out some coins from my pants pocket. Placing them on the fingerprint-covered glass countertop, I waited for some reaction from the elderly woman, having put in front of her a mild inconvenience. The desired effect never occurred. Thank you. Have a good day. The old lady recited to me before waving me off, returning to her state of stillness. As I retrieved my lunch for the day and began to walk away, I looked at the TV one last time, catching a glimpse at what appeared to be a reporter at the scene of a crime. Before we continue, I must fix an obvious contradiction to this story. For example, how did I communicate with the locals when I did not know any Japanese? And why were they responding in perfect English? As absurd as this may sound, ever since I was a kid, I was always able to understand other people's words, despite language. Back then, I thought it was nothing special. If someone had talked to me in another language, 
my mind would automatically translate his or her words to English. It was only recently that I found out that when I spoke back, they would also know what I was saying. I don't know how or why I have this ability, but frankly, I didn't give much thought about it. It was helping me survive in that country, so why ask questions? Walking out of the convenience store, I proceeded to the train station a nice and short walk away. Before I knew it, I found myself standing in an overcrowded train after waiting on the platform with multiple irritated office workers and students, all wanting to reach their destinations in peace. As the steel vehicle sped along the tracks, I let out a small yawn and slumped back into the wall, closing my eyes and lowering my head to rest for a bit. I will always thank the Japanese for their unspoken rule of not speaking loudly in public. With the only sounds around me being the actual train and the occasional whispering, I spent the time I was there often questioning myself and my situation. Why was I even making the effort to attend school? I had no obligation to. It was not like I was learning anything anyway. Everything they were teaching me I had already learned, except for the topics in history class. I was not in any clubs or after school activities, and no one at school seemed to remember me long enough to nominate me for cleanup duty. I was just scenery. A foreigner no one wanted to talk to. Why should I waste my time doing something worthless? Unfortunately, as an American in Japan, I was to forever be an outsider. The first week I spent living there was all it took to drive that cold fact into my brain. Walking down the street, attending class, even buying groceries, people went out of their way to ignore me. Because of that treatment, I had developed a sort of um, inferiority complex, always calling myself unimportant. Looking back, I fear what I would have done to myself if the following events had never happened. Suddenly, a yelp removed me from my thoughts and caused me to raise my head back up, wondering what was going on. In front of me, there was a girl who was visibly shaking, her eyes shut with tears threatening to fall from the corners. Sensing something was not right, I unconsciously looked around and saw a middle-aged man in a suit staring off to his far right, his face also red. However, the mere proximity of the man and the girl, and their respective reactions, led me to put two and two together. Sir, I would stop that if I were you. I said to the man after taking a step forward, causing both the girl and him to look at me in surprise. What are you talking about? The man asked in false confusion after hesitating a moment, acting as if he was doing nothing wrong. The girl blinked a few times, amazed that someone had come to her rescue. Of course, I wasn't saving her because I was this defender of justice or some crap like that. Actually... Even I did not know why I was stepping in. Sir, you wouldn't want me to announce to everyone what you're doing, do you? I whispered to the man as I took another step forward, causing the girl to move aside. Despite being surrounded by people, no one seemed to be paying any attention to us. A sad reality of the world. No one seemed to care anymore. Listen boy, I have no idea what you're talking about, but don't go accusing me of something I didn't do. The man said to me with malice now leaking from his eyes. He was trying to use the authority he automatically had by being older than me. Though I was younger, and usually passive, I still had my morals, and I was far from letting such perversions occur right in front of me. So I only looked back at him with a determined expression. Really? So you were not feeling to scroll up just now? I responded back a little louder, jerking my thumb over in the girl's direction. Of course not! She could even say I wasn't! Ask her! Glancing over to the girl, I did just what the man requested. Hey, you, was this man touching you in any weird way? I asked a flesh girl next to me, who jumped a little when I spoke to her. Gazing at me with embarrassment, she did not say anything. That gave the man some confidence. See? I told you, I'm innocent! The man shouted to me with a look of relief, unaware that he had spoken too loudly that time. All around us, people seemed to have begun paying attention to the conversation, curiosity influencing their thoughts. Realizing what had occurred, I decided to take advantage. 
But sir, this girl is clearly uncomfortable. You can tell just by looking at her face. How can you say you are innocent when it is obvious that you were molesting her? I cried out, acting the part of the concerned citizen. The minute I finished speaking, the man's face grew pale. Reality, catching up to him. At the same time, the people around us in the train cart changed drastically. Having been a docile scene moments ago, the place was now filled with hostile passengers. All I had to do thereon was to take a step back and watch on as the flood came crashing down on the man. How could you do that to an innocent girl? Well, wait, I... You should be ashamed of yourself. N no that's... No! Someone call the police! Quick! Grab him! The mob did not give the man any chance to defend himself. Immediately, they had begun to yell out insults and orders against him. Their minds riled up. Soon enough, the man was detained by a group of angry males. He could not do anything more. By then, I had stopped paying attention and was back to leaning on the wall of the train, since the matter was now resolved. Almost conveniently, the train then came to a smooth stop at the next station, causing a single crow to fly past my window from the platform. Stepping out of the cart before anyone else, I calmly commenced my usual route to the school, not bothering to check what time it was. Proceeding through the waiting platform, I ignored the shouts of the accused man as he was basically dragged to the nearest police officer. By then, I had already placed the whole situation behind me. As I walked away, I came into believing that no one from the mob would be interested in the piece of scenery that stood up for the victim, which was fine by me. Unfortunately, I was wrong. Or, one person was. Um, excuse me. 